In the various videos we've looked at constructs like this. This is a ball sitting on top of a pipe attached to the ground state. Uh, we've also looked at tori, toruses. Here's an example of a torus. Seen this before. Here the torus is more or less directly connected to the ground state. But at some point I began to ask the question is it possible to build structures on either side of the of the ground state? So here's a case where we have a um, kind of fully uh, construct for an icosahedron and then on the other side of the fabric we have um, an, a structure with uh, two six-edge nodes. Uh, I guess this the way I distinguish this is the this is the shiny side of the fabric and this is the dull side. It's it's sort of hard to uh, see the difference but obviously there are two sides. So then the question arose is it pos is this really a different construct? And although it's sort of difficult here to do so, I can take the structure and push it through to the other side. I, I won't do that here because the neck of this structure is too small. But if we take this uh, structure that we've seen uh, earlier and play with it, you can see that it's possible to push the structure through to the other side like this without cutting, taking the fabric apart and this of the ground state. So the icosahedron or any such any ball like structure a torus zero uh, is uh, not really um, something different um, but it's uh, still uh, we one can um, have the structure on either side of the of the fabric all that it requires is a change in the mm, distortion level in the structure for a brief period of time. Of course this could be done uh, more elegantly than I'm doing it here. If one uh, thinks about uh, toruses being embedded in the ground state, in this case the connection between the torus and the ground state is, is uh, close but, but minimal. The idea arose, is it possible to further embed the torus uh, in the ground state so that the part of the torus is actually a part of the ground state? And the answer to this is, is yes. Here is a construct where the ground state happens to be in yellow, but now not so much that the structure itself is embedded, but that there are now two pipes connecting the ground state to the object and that the bottom of the toroidal hole is a portion of the ground state. So in other structures we'll push the object, uh, the toroidal object, more deeply into the ground state. But this was the first construction that I made that showed how the uh, an object can have a toroidal hole where a portion of the toroidal hole is part of the ground state. Now I played with the notion of putting the toruses on either side of the ground state. The ground state happens to be in red uh, here. Uh, the torus in yellow is of a particular construction. But you see now that the pipe has been uh, reduced and so now the object itself seems to be more embedded in the structure and part of the torus is in the ground state. I've done this for both sides, objects on both sides of the uh, ground state. Here's a, in green is an object, a slightly different construction. Once again, it's fairly heavily in, embedded in the ground state, and a portion of the ground state is um, um, here. Um, so it, it's fairly clear that it's impossible to push this object to the other side because in order to do that you'd have to take apart the fabric of the triangular neighborhood networks here as one made the transition from this side to the other side of the of the ground state and the same thing is true of a torus uh, on this side of the ground state it's impossible to push 
this to the other side of the ground state. So this is the, was the beginning of my idea of particles and antiparticles. This seemed to be the first property that uh, distinguished particles, triangular neighborhood network objects on either side of the ground state. And that if they started on one side of the ground state, they'd have to remain there or on the other side. And so I've tried to develop this idea further from this point of, of, of understanding. In this construct, I played with the notion of how two toroidal objects can be close to each other and straddling each other in a certain sense. In this case, the ground state is in uh, yellow and both objects happen to be in red. Uh, this object is embedded deeply in the ground state here, but then as you see, this other object over here, which is a bit bigger, straddles this area right here of common structure, and it's uh, less embedded in the, in the ground state. The hole, the toroidal hole, is a bit bigger. Uh, but you see these two objects are uh, straddling each other, and uh, one wonders uh, how uh, this object could be merged into this object. Um, and that was the question that I was addressing uh, with this, uh, this construction. This is a case where I've taken two arbitrary uh, toroidal objects. The ground state is in yellow. Here we have a fairly significant symmetric torus uh, attached to the ground state by a, by a short pipe. And here we have another object, a toroidal object, on, of a different construction on the other side of the ground state, also attached by a short uh, pipe. So this is uh, typical, I think, of how uh, signals, uh, remember that at the second level of structure, uh, each signal becomes a toroidal hole whether it's embedded in the pipe with both ends in the pipe or whether it's an isolated standalone toroidal object as we've shown uh, a, a matter of uh, difference. But the idea that uh, toroidal holes could, of uh, various uh, constructions, could exist on either side of the ground state is really very interesting. And so this is um, a very important aspect of the a recursive nature of the triangular neighborhood networks that allow structures of different constructions to be uh, on either side of the uh, of, of the ground state. So this is my view of what uh, particles and antiparticles might be. It's not proven, but of course this construct has the what seems to be the correct logical uh, properties. Uh, for such uh, uh, activity. I forgot to mention what is probably an important property of the way toruses are embedded in the, the ground state. This is the shiny side, so-called, of the fabric, and this is the dull side of the fabric, just to give them names. The entrance to the object on the shiny side is on the dull side. In the same way, an object on the dull side has its entrances on the shiny side. This is an important property, um, and I'll show you what, why it is important later on. Well, here's an interesting object. Uh, it's a torus here, embedded, uh, attached to the ground state, which happens to be in white in this case. But we see for the first time an object going across through the hole of a torus. So this is a torus 2 because there are two toroidal holes. The entrance of the, this object on the shiny side is a hole on the dull side. But for this torus, this uh, pipe here, the entrance, which we can't get to, is on the dull side on both places. So this object is different from the torses that we've seen before. So how did a pair of torses that might have looked like this at one point and then later on become 
possibly something like this, eventually wind up like something like this. And this is one of the questions in the dynamics of toroidal hole manipulation that I've not resolved. I think all of the important ingredients are here. That is to say, originally this toroidal hole was on the dull side of the of the fabric, but somehow it went through the structure and arranged itself so that it was now connecting the surface here uh, from the dull side to dull side uh, of the uh, of the fabric. And uh, this is a problem that um, is important because unlike these structures here where the, the toroidal holes are clearly on the opposite sides of the fabric, in this case this toroidal hole here is embedded itself in an object which is on the so-called shiny side of the um, of the fabric. So this is a different object. This one could almost say is a particle antiparticle together, or I don't know exactly how to describe this. This is a relatively large object that has three levels of structure, unlike the model, the structure we just looked at that had two levels of structure. This is a an icosahedral structure that has a toroidal hole here and in several other equivalent places. But you see that there's structure inside this object. So now, oh and I guess I have to say that this, this toroidal hole goes from shiny side to shiny side, so it's a conventional toroidal hole. But now, here's another portion of this structure where we have three uh, attachments between this uh, dual surface here that has two faces, both the shiny side. So this hole here goes from dull side to dull side to dull side and all of the equivalent structures are like that. But then, and it's difficult to see, you see how I can find it, here, you see there's a structure in here, but there's another hole, my hand gets in the way, another hole here that goes from shiny side to shiny side. So this is the third level of structure. This is the first here, the yellow here is the second, and then the yellow here is the third. So this is a three-level object, and this represents, for me at least anyway, my notion of complexity. I made this model in 1967, 1966, and um, so it shows you that I've been thinking about these things for a very long time. So I'll bring back this uh, model, uh, one of my favorites, of the particles on toroidal holes on either side of the fabric, the ground state. So this is a single level uh, torus. We showed uh, the, that there are second level toruses and third level structures. So in general one could argue there are n levels of st toroidal structures that can be attached uh, to the ground state. So whether you view these as signals or as objects uh, is a matter of uh, no concern. Um, but of course what we've shown is that they can be on either side of the ground state and, and that's where they stay. Uh, as to why there are in our universe only particles uh, and why there aren't uh, visible any antiparticles uh, part of that may simply be that uh, the particles can be, the antiparticles can be absorbed in structures of greater complexity. And uh, so, the, you know, all of these questions, at least in my mind, are still ambiguous. Perhaps the physicist will have stronger views, but what I'm trying to do here is to provide a topological basis for complexity 
and certainly being on either side of the of the uh, ground state <laughs> it's very interesting and uh, th that there can be as many levels of complexity in an object as you wish that also is interesting and so we'll see how these things play out uh, later on